What's going on, everybody? The Voice Season 25 is back. The very first episode was last night, and I am here with the highlights. Let's check it out. Now, before we get into it, one of the things you do need to know about me is I truly hate competition reality TV shows. However, here with The Voice, these judges teach them. They give them tools for their toolbox. So no matter the outcome, every performer who graces that stage leaves with some extra tools that they didn't come in with. Those tools are absolutely priceless. So here we are, episode one. This episode was filled with, with insane talent. It was incredibly country music heavy simply because of the new addition, Dan and Shay. It had even included one of their own songs being performed by one of the auditionees. Let's see what it looks like. First gentleman we have coming out to the gate is Ryan Argast. He made the incredibly difficult decision to cover one of our own judges' songs. A song called Speechless, who was written by Dan and Shay, with the brand new judges we have here today. He starts off with this wonderful presence. Beautiful, beautiful pop sound. Really wandering the stage, uh, uh, getting the intera uh, interaction from the audience, trying to draw the judges in with that. Very soft, very subtle beginning with a very pop sexy R&B-ish sort of uh, flow. You say you'll be down in five Smell of your perfume It's floating down the stairs And fixing up your hair like you do I know that I'll be a mess The second that I see you You won't be surprised It happens every time It's nothing new then all of a sudden, he turns it, bam, right into this bluesy, gritty, gravelly voice. It's always on a night like tonight. I think how you can read my mind. It's when you look at me with those eyes. Really, really pushing the entire song all the way to the end, adding a really nice addition to Dan and Shay's song with his incredible grit. Uh, it's almost as if like Johnny Cocker did it, turned around and de decided to do a version of their song. Really is wonderful. The only thing that I wanna look forward to in this young, young man's uh, future is I wanna see where his voice is actually going. Is his grit a healthy grit? Is he using those second pair of vocal folds in order to create that sound? Is he using the muscles or is he actually really taking your vocal folds and smacking them together Together when he sings that type of grit sound. See, there's a difference between yelling and yelling loud to the point where your voice cracks and then screaming and utilizing a technique to give a certain timbre and a certain texture to your voice. I want to see his voice become, feel safer, feel a bit more forward as he goes on. I think the future is very bright for this guy because he's phenomenal. Looking forward to him and I'm looking forward to his hair. I want you to think as if Gloria Gaynor and Jason Mraz had a baby. That was Danny Stacy's version of I Will Survive. At first I was afraid, I was petrified. Kept thinking I could never live without you by my side. But I spent oh so many nights thinking how you did me wrong and I grew strong. She took something very disco, very poppy, and made it like this very cool folksy pop song with her acoustic guitar. Her, her beautiful texture on her voice, she does have a little rasp up there in some of the higher notes. Did you think I lay down and die? Oh, not it does sound and did seem like she was utilizing that rasp as texture. It was an addition rather than it being the top of her range. I think she could go higher. She proved towards the end of the song, she was belting out some really clean, clear, crystal clear high notes, but she adds in that really beautiful grit, that bluesy, nice texture 
uh, that she has in that that gravel part. Um, beautiful phrasing, really great at the phrasing. She was capable of just telling that entire story. One thing I really, really loved, and this is my biggest, one of my biggest things, when you cover a song, the very first couple times you sing the, the verse and chorus, you really wanna keep it simple. You wanna do the melody as it's written, as it was written in the very, by the originator. At first I was afraid, I was petrified. That's the familiar part, you know, is the melody line, the chorus line. Keeping it familiar, that's when everybody gets nostalgic. That's when everybody, you wanna pull everybody in with nostalgia because they recognize the tune, they're coming with you for the ride. And then once they're with you for the ride, that's when you start to change it up and you start doing a little bit of those vocal gymnastics. That's exactly what she did. Really, really hit me. I think she was one of my favorites of the evening. She did end up going away working with Chance the Rapper for this season. For me, 10 out of 10, I'm definitely interested to see what happens should they take her guitar away. That would be interesting. There's tons of people out there that are great with their guitar and they'll sing anything. You take that away. I don't know what, what should I do with my hands. So when you take a little piece away, you start to see really where their baseline of ability is when it comes to being an entertainer on top of being a, a musician. If that makes any sense? I think it does. <laughs> Moving on, we have 35-year-old Josh Sanders. Now, he sang Whiskey on You, and what an amazing, amazing sense of kind of normalcy that you got from him. There is no crazy dress. There is no costume. He came out in his black shirt, black pants, and his hat. He had his guitar. He stood there, and he sang the song with confidence. He had conviction. He knew what he was doing. He wanted to be understated because that's what works well for him, and it sure did. One of my biggest things when you create new arrangements and when you're trying to do an audition piece or, or something simply to grab someone's attention, you just want to get it, and you only have 60 seconds, 30 seconds, 45 seconds. It's levels. It's building, starting small, growing. You want to ebb and flow it, but you always want to make it travel to a different destination. And within the 45 to 60 seconds that this gentleman sang, I saw the entire arc line. He started very small, very unassuming. Then all of a sudden, he just blew us out of the water because we weren't expecting it. Look at him. He was just, he's just playing his guitar, enjoying himself. Then all of a sudden, there comes that note. And really, he puts his heart and soul into it. Phenomenal storyteller. I really like his phrasing. He's got, again, great levels, great building. And at the last second, he got two chairs to spin around, got Dan and Chase spin around at Reba, and he decided to join up with Team Reba. <laughs> Now we are going to flip everything on its backside. This is Nadej. She is 26 years old and this young lady has a silky, smooth voice. Really, really wonderful tone, beautiful control. She really thinks about the placement where she's putting the notes. like she, she has a background within music so she's really thinking of all the notes that she's hitting in every single riff every single little movement that she's doing she's really thinking of the musicality behind that Definitely a welcome change to a lot of the country material that we've been watching throughout it. I think the only version, only little thing that I'd love for her to work on is the word phrasing. Musicality, she's perfectly fine. She knows what she's doing. She jumps around those scales and she just knows where she's going and knows the direction of how to get there. With that being said, I also believe that she can do the same, but with the words. Tell the story a little bit more. There are too many breaks in the words. We don't pause in the middle of a word like, I'm speechless. 
Now, I understand why it had to happen, because those riffs, they took the breath out of you. And once you got to the end, you had to have that little catch breath on the very last word. People don't speak like that. So if you can, if we can work where the musicality and the phrasing connect together on these next on the next uh, the next performance, I think I'd be absolutely mind boggled. That would be fantastic. I'm looking forward to seeing if that's where they take her. And now we've got the first girl group of the season. This is a trio out of Oklahoma called OK3. They did a phenomenal version of Megan Trainer's Made You Look. They started a cappella, and you could immediately hear how well they listen. Uh, I felt like that fun arrangement. It was very much like the, the mel harmonies and the melodies, very doo-wop. I felt like a bugle boy of Company B met Megan Trainer, and they just turned this turn this thing out. Really, really beautiful stuff. All of them have phenomenal voices. Everybody's screaming up high, they're going low, their ranges are really beautiful. Tambers, forward, all very forward. They are a little on the nasal edge sometimes, especially some of those higher notes when they uh, really, when they harmonize and they go up. Sometimes there's a little bit, just a little too forward in the high. Now that could be anything from the sound technician. It could be someone not listening and just trying to go use the force and get got excited and tried to go up and above. I'm gonna push it, push more on the sound just because it seemed like that group was just too tight to hear someone just going willy nilly off the charts. You know what I mean? However, again, blended perfectly, very well listened to, really amazing arrangement. Showcase the entire group rather than having a lead throughout the song and then kind of like vignettes of the other two, the entire group showed. Fantastic, I'm looking forward to more. Uh, what would I would love to see from them is a little bit more individuality out of themselves. Now I'm not saying vocally anybody needs to outsing anybody else. I'm just looking for three separate people rather than three sisters, three cousins, three friends, you know, with the same style and background, same age group sort of thing. I just want to see their individuality. Um, I want someone with maybe a little bit more sass. Maybe someone's a bit demure. Maybe someone's a power belter. But then when they come together, they have that list, those listening ears on and they bam, snap right into it. They lock in and they just set. It would be a really great juxtaposition to hear that going forward in the, uh, in the competition. Episode one's youngest duo, youngest participants of the show so far are, is 17 year old Jeremy and Justin Garcia. They sang a rendition of Story of My Life. They added beautiful harmonies in it. Wonderful, wonderful harmonies. Now the beginning of this song, if you really listen slowly, that's why I haven't started the music yet. The beginning of this song it's a little wonky. I want you to take a listen. Written in these walls are the stories that I can. But if you notice, right as they catch, Chance the Rapper hits his buzzer. Written in these walls are the stories that I can explain. Now, that's a part for me that immediately says Chance must have noticed that the beginning was rocky. The music started, the singing came in, they weren't together, but then they fixed it. They connected and they moved forward and it, they did, there was no hiccup. It didn't misstep them, anything. That is a sign of someone who knows what they're doing and has a confidence in what they're doing. They didn't even think twice about it. That people work for years and still can't get over little mishaps like that. And these two kids are 17 and they just kind of roll through it as if they were in, you know, their mom's living room. Uh, that beautiful arrangement. Beautiful. I love the harmonies that they were doing. She told me in the morning she don't feel the same about us. Kind of group. A group. Uh, really great control over their voices, their diction. That was a little, um, that was a little off. Both of them are a little um, marble mouth with their diction. Their runs were really, really nice. You'd also tell they were 17. So you could tell they're coming out of that puberty part. So their control over the voice, it's a little rough. It kind of, a lot of those notes, they kind of took a second to go mm, catch. I really enjoyed their arrangement. I think the only issue for me about the arrangement is that I didn't like the song for them. Felt like they could have done something. I think, I felt like they could have done something better 
that would have showed them off more. Don't get me wrong. I think it sounded great. I thought it was an excellent, uh, uh, it got them through. So that's all that matters, right? They are off to the next level. Just in retrospect, I kind of feel that there are a lot more options that might be geared a little bit closer to their age range that they can they could internalize and utilize their own storytelling abilities instead of reaching for something that they can't exactly uh, align themselves with. I want to see them connected to a song and being confident and in charge on that stage. I think throughout the seasons, if they're there long enough throughout the episodes, we might get them there. I really, really hope so because their, their sound, they have so much potential to really go far uh, and they really need that, that whatever tools they're going to get. I hope they just eat it up with a sponge. They were fantastic. They got a long way to go and they got a lot of hard competition. <laughs> Thirty-one-year-old Tay Lewis graces this stage with a beautiful country song. He sings "Love Somebody Like You." He walks out with his chin high. He has his hat back so everybody can see his face. His guitar is nice and high, and he is ready. He knows this song inside out. He's got. He really, really felt it from his performance. I felt his. I felt his. His desire to be there. I felt his. I felt his happiness of, of just enjoying what he was doing, uh, and it all just built up from the beginning and just exploded at the end. And it was really, really nice to watch. Beautiful voice. I'm looking forward to him. What I would like to see from him in the future, go further. Let's go further down the country of Western Rabbit Hole. Let's get you. Let's let's sing some Johnny Cash. Let's uh, let's throw in some some uh, Can't Fence Me In. Uh, uh, you know these these beautiful beautiful big old older songs. I want to see him just go back and and uh, really dive into the genre. Um, and so I'm interested to see what he brings to that. Reba has the history, the knowledge. I'm sure he has plenty of it himself. But then with the two minds collide, you could really turn some of this older sort of very. Um, what we would consider today being very elevator-ish music into something new, into something, give, breathe it new life. I'm looking forward to see what he does in the future. <laughs> Maddie Jane, this is a 24 year old young woman. She came out to sing Escapism. Now she did phenomenal. She had excellent control, her dynamics. That if they were at 10, she was pulling way back, making things really, really small. But then she could belt her face off. And all of a sudden, she's going to just break down and rap. I love everyone I love all day. Feel the secret to the stranger in my bed. I remember that the soap is nothing to regret. And do it really, really, really well. Her confidence was astounding her control her ability to jump between the different styles of singing my favorite is when she starts to do the rap or the the rhyme speaking rapping but then she'll jump onto some pitches and start singing things that is in its element very musical theater thing to do because in musical theater you see everybody break out in song but the real class the top talent are capable of having a monologue and driving that monologue simply speaking into music seamlessly all of a sudden you're halfway through a song and you don't even know remember when they started singing that sort of thing is incredibly impressive to me and pretty much if you look at it and it's hard to do so when i'm listening to someone rap and telling the story and using the words and then throwing in singing they're they're singing on the tunes and they're doing the riffs all of them well thought you could tell she's listening to what she's saying you could tell she understands the objective of the song and she's out there she's out there to win she's ready now the one thing i did notice is that she had an entire directionary crew like she it was it was the it, she was in the dark she was backlit there was all this ambiance sort of stuff happening we didn't see her face until the judge first judge turned around and then we're all four judges turned around and then we saw her face i'm not exactly sure why there was more effort put into that than the others of course there are 50 different reasons it could could be um we could go as crazy conspiracy theorists and said oh it's because they secretly want her to win so they give her the best lighting and the best direction who knows it's a possibility i you know occam's razor probably what happened is that whatever something happened during her performance of that show where the shots didn't work out it wasn't clean it 
the the uh, so they had to clean it up in post, and that's kind of what they came up with. Um, that happens often, you know, uh, in regular shoot in in TV shows and movies. You'll do entire movies, finish everything, and then once it's everything, you think everything's done, you're off the set, everything's good. You get a phone call. We need you to come back in because you got to do voiceovers to what you were just doing on TV. So you're going to put yourself in a booth, watch on screen what you're doing that time then, and then match with your words what you're saying on screen. So these little, these, these cleanups, they're a pain, but they have to happen sometimes. And I, w I do wonder, I think this is probably one of them, the first bit, whatever that happened, whether it be the cameras, whether it be memory loss, I don't know. Something might have gone wrong, and this is how they came out with it. I did like her. I did love everything that she did. And she was one of the groups, along with OK3, they had no, they did not tell us. They left that as a cliffhanger of whose team they're going on. Now, clearly, the first episode has just set the bar. Some phenomenal talent. There's a lot of great competition within this group. I'm really looking forward to what's coming up next. I hope you guys will join me on this ride. I'll speak to you all later. Until then, I'll catch you on the flippity flop. Bye.